Now, when you're purchasing or evaluating um, soundboards for use in a PC system, there are a lot of factors you need to keep in mind. Let's take a look at some of them. The first thing you need to look at is input and output through the board. What is it that you want to do with the board? A basic soundboard will have usually a speaker out connector, and it probably has a microphone connector as well into which you can plug a microphone. This allows you to input audio through the microphone and also send audio out to the speakers. Well, some folks want to connect their PC system to some other audio device and be able to route the audio through the sound card and out through a set of really nice speakers, in which case you need to have a line-in connector as well. That'll allow you to pull audio from a different source, bring it in through there, which you can then use the PC to record or manipulate files or whatever, or just send it straight on through to your high-end PC speakers. There's also a different kind of connector that's only found on a little bit higher end audio boards, and it's called the SPDIF connector. That stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. It's a standard audio transfer file interface. It's usually found on digital audio equipment, such as a digital audio tape machine. And it's also found on a lot of newer high end audio boards. It's used to transfer digital files from one system to another without having to go through a digital to analog to analog to digital conversion, which can cause a little bit of loss of quality there somewhere. Instead, we just transfer it straight across as digital. In addition, if you want to play games using your PC, then a lot of audio boards also include a joystick connector. If that's what you want to use, then you ought to make sure that your soundboard has a joystick port on it. In addition to the input-output ports on the audio interface itself, you also need to be concerned with the quality of the audio that the soundboard is capable of producing, because not all soundboards are the same. One of the key features you can look at to determine the quality of audio the board's capable of producing is the number of channels that it uses. The most basic sound cards will offer two channels, which is just your simple basic stereo audio. The very first soundboard I ever bought back in the early 90s was actually a one-channel card, and it cost me a fortune, and the sad thing is I was so glad to have it, I was almost giddy. It was a single channel, didn't have a stereo, it produced mono sound. Wasn't real great. Today we don't even worry about those. Your basic low end sound card will at least offer two channels which gives you stereo left and right. You can also purchase a four channel stereo audio board which gives you front left, front right, rear left, rear right. If you want to really kick up the quality of the audio coming out of your soundboard, then you need to invest in a board that implements Dolby Digital Sound. Dolby Digital is a digital audio coding technique that reduces the amount of data needed to produce high quality sound. It also reduces and eliminates and masks noise coming through the system. By doing this, we reduce the amount of data that's reduced to represent our sound by up to one-tenth. Dolby Audio provides five full bandwidth channels. You have your front left, front right, better put a line here so we make sure we don't get them confused, front left, front right, center, surround left, and surround right. Dolby Digital also includes one other low bandwidth channel called the LFE channel, which stands for Low Frequency Effect. This channel is responsible for producing low frequency special effect sounds that really makes your system come to life with lots of rumbling and deep sounds. Sometimes it's also called the subwoofer channel, so we'll put an S right here to indicate our subwoofer.
Together, this Dolby Digital Standard is called Dolby 5.1 because we have five full bandwidth channels and one LFE channel. There's also several other Dolby Digital implementations. There's Dolby Digital 6.1, there's Dolby Digital 7.1. The only difference is, is the number of channels being used to recreate the sound. The 6.1 and 7.1 version of Dolby Digital simply add more channels. For example, with the 7.1, we add our surround, rear, left, and surround, rear, right channels to our original five Dolby channels. And we still have our one subwoofer channel, therefore it's 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, dot 1. There's lots of other really cool features that you can have in a soundboard. If your soundboard implements Dolby Digital, then you may want to see if it supports the DTS standard, which stands for Digital Theater System. This standard is designed to produce near theater quality audio from your PC system, and it's based on Dolby 5.1. In order to have a DTS system, you have to have a DTS compatible soundboard and you also have to have DTS compatible audio speakers. I have seen some implementations of software DTS emulation which allows you to simulate DTS quality sound on two channel stereo audio soundboards. It's good but it isn't nearly as good as the real live DTS 5.1 channel implementation. In addition to DTS, if you're really into games, then you may want to look at soundboards that support the EAX standard. The EAX standard was developed by Creative Labs in 1998. Creative Labs has been a pioneer in developing soundboards since the early 90s. EAX is designed to produce interactive 3D audio in PC gaming, which provides a really cool sense of realism. Obviously, the more of these cool features you pack onto your soundboard, the more it's going to cost you. So you need to weigh the cost versus the benefit of having the particular feature.